Hey Kevin, uh, Rick here. I'm here to go and talk about a cathedral hive that I went to uh, learn about building. Uh, I know that other uh, members here at the organization have bar hives, and I just took the one step farther. Um, so here, right, right in front of us, we have uh, what you can call a cathedral hive. What this really is, it's a double bar hive. Um, so your normal, your normal bar hive would have just hives that go directly across um, horizontally. Um, one of the issues, though, with a bar hive is that when you look at the comb itself, when you try to go and take the, the comb sideways, it's very weak along the edges. Um, and for an inexperienced person, they might go and snap the comb off. The new, the new thing about the cathedral hive is, is, is that it goes and supports all the comb on three edges, and that the box itself is shaped almost as a, a, a complete hexagon. So that the bees, when, when you go and take your, uh, when you take your uh, frames out to go and take a look, you'll be able to go and turn them on the side a little bit, and they'll be more supported. One of the other interesting things that's about this is that these have tubes all built across the top, and what these are considered to be is a super highway to allow bees to be able to travel back and forth along the most uh, heated part of the hive. And this is really important during the winter time that um, instead of having the bees, um, normally in a Langstrom hive, the bees would have to move down along the frame and come back up again um, when they would move from frame to frame in their ball. In, in this case, what happens is instead of moving from, from uh, down horizontally, they're actually able to move directly through each one of the frames. Each one of these frames has a small notch that's right at the top uh, this notch is to allow venting for the bees, and what they will do is automatically close or open those with propolis to allow venting so that the, uh, the um, honey can evaporate, or they'll close them to make a, a more warm area for the brood chamber. So what we have, in general, we have 20 bars that go across the top. We have um, in case we want to go and close off a certain section, I've created a false back here so that in the beginning, what we can do is we can go and force the bees to go and build their brood nest in the front. Once they've gone and, and drawn their comb, we can slowly move the observation window back so that they'll go and slowly build that. And then eventually, this will come out completely. This will go in like this, and we'll just have that will be completely closed. So, not only can we observe though through this window on the side, the bottom of the hive, we've also built in an observation floor here, which I haven't put the glass in yet. But what will happen is we'll put in a full piece of glass in here, and I have a stopper over the truck right now that will fit on here with a pair of nuts, so that at any point in time we can go and pull this open and actually see what the hive looks like without going to disturb it. Now, to put it together. I'm just going to sit it over here in the cart. In the front here, you can go into the, there's an entrance with a landing board. Standard, standard. Coming in. The next part that goes on. I may have this backwards, so forgive me. Now the lid goes and has a vent at the end here, and vents at the top. Um, so air can flow, flow through. It also has a double shield on the top so that any solar radiation that comes in and hits the top of the hive um, will be reflected, deflected. I don't know exactly how to say it. Collected. <laughs> and then the top piece, right on top. Again, we have screen here. I put screen at the end here to make sure that the bees don't get any confused and try to build anything up top here. I have a pair of, of um, cleats here that are angled to the outside so that when I put the loop on, it should automatically center. Here she is. That's the cathedral hive. We're going to go and, uh, Bob's going to help me go and try to get some bees in here and we'll see how we do. I'll give you guys a report later on in the summer. Oh, that's beautiful. I, it looks like the lid overhangs a little bit over the top entrance. You made this in longer? Actually, the plans that I bought were wrong. Ah. I, and I ended up just liking it the way that it looked. Um, so I ended up keeping it. 
the, the, when I bought the plans, uh, the plans are available at uh, Backyard Beehives, I believe mm -hmm. is the website. Um, the gentleman just went and changed everything from three, from three quarter inch wood, from I'm sorry, from one inch nominal wood to three quarter inch wood. So he changed a lot of the, the settings inside. Um, the plans were off on a, on a I would say about 10 or 15 different points, so I had to go and redo the plans as I was going along. And one of the issues is that he had more frames along the inside. I think he had he had 23 frames. So this lid is actually 23 frames long, and the rest of the box is 20 frames long. But again, I just like the way that it looked at the end. So the only thing I had to do was if you look underneath, I just went and filled this, this space in to make sure that there wasn't a huge gap here, and so that stuff can go inside. But overall, I think it looks really cool. And heads up, my daughter went and picked the, the pink color last night. We thought it was the ugliest color ever, but it ended up looking pretty cool. So, I, I think it looks great. It. It's still wet to, to when we touched it. It's tacky. Yep. So. Yeah, it needs probably one more, but I'm hoping that by, by Monday, I can go and get something in here and we'll see how we do. So. Great. Thanks for the preview.